Thank you for tuning in to tonight's episode of the Holy Spirit Blog Talk Radio Show. I'm your host, Minister G.L. Hart, and I thank you all for tuning in. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to thank some of my sponsors, a uh, wonderful sister that I met earlier this week, Miss Nally J of Nally J Naturals, as well as Patina Blue, wonderful home decor studio that is really moving and making uh, wonderful things happen around the metro Atlanta area. Tonight's episode, uh, we call this the New Jane Crow, and um, this show is really about what's happening amongst our young black women uh, around the U.S., but not only in the U.S., but around the globe. There's been a recent trend uh, dealing with our young sisters, uh, where it's no longer do they even seek any type of uh, relationship uh, dealing with the opposite sex. But not, not only that, uh, many have been portrayed in the media, in the news, locally and globally, is just a, a piece of meat. And we're gonna be talking a little bit more in depth about why it is uh, all of a sudden, this sudden trend of women acting like men, uh, being more masculine than men. And this is a part one uh, dealing with this show tonight because tomorrow night we'll be talking about the masculinity of our young black boys. And that's going to really be a show because black men are the endangered species. So uh, that show is going to be uh, just as uh, riveting as tonight's show. And then following on Friday, we're going to do a final show, a part three, uh, dealing with uh, the breakdown of the black families. Because listen, people, all this thing is tied in together. Separate, separate, and separate. It's all tied in together. And what a shame it is as a people of God, we just fall for every damn thing. I mean everything. And yet we are the original creators of all. We have allowed different cultures and ethnicity to steal our own religion, our faith, our history, our heritage, and rape us from our own families. And now here we are in these urban communities, bitter, angry, frustrated, feeling like there's no hope. When God placed hope in every one of you before you was even formed or in a womb, you were made as a spirit. Yet you come out acting like fools and a fleshly animal. And that's not who you are. But there's, there lies the question. Most of our young sisters and brothers and their parents do not know who they are. So th this is no surprise that tonight we're going to hear uh, from Dr. Umar Johnson. I have a little, he did a lecture of many uh, dealing with the infamization in, in, uh, of black women, but also the masculinity of black boys, particular black boys. And we're gonna hear from this renowned orator, clinical psychologist with a PhD in psychology, and he's gonna give and he's written books, by the way, people, dealing with this. And he's going to give his expertise on why this is happening. And again, I don't want to put my, my own two cents in it, uh, dealing with the, 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 the sexual part of it. But I will put my two cents in when I say, baby, if you don't know who you are, you will fall for anything. 
and you'll think you're a monkey. If you see Beyonce dancing like a monkey, you'll, you'll put on a shirt that say, I'm a monkey, and walk out the door. And that is not of God. That is of the world. And you were told from the time you got here, be not of this world. So everything you're seeing is an illusion. And what a shame it is that we fell for it. What a shame it is. And we as a people have fell for it. I'm going to take a quick commercial break. And then I'm going to come back and read this wonderful article this doctor wrote. Uh, dealing with uh, what's happening with our black sisters. A wonderful article uh, that she used her professional advice as well as her personal opinion uh, dealing with this, this surge of uh, black women uh, fighting and bad girls club, all this foolishness on TV. And now, now women think they men. And now you got, you got women trying to fight men. And it's all a setup. <laughs> it has nothing to, they don't give a damn if, if you call yourself gay. They're tearing down your family. What a fool you are. You can't even see it. And hoping you, along with Planned Parenthood, hoping you never have children. They're trying to, they're trying to abolish your race entirely. And you go right along with it so easily because it's fun, it's, it's exciting. Drugs, sex, music, it's amazing. It's amazing. So I'm gonna take a, a quick commercial break and I'll be back with this article in just a moment after these wonderful messages. Listen, I just ran across, ran into a fabulous spirit on yesterday. She is an owner, creator, and designer of her own fragrance oils and more. Natalie J and her company, Natalie J Naturals, has turned the lives of many of her clients around by sharing her God-given gift that keeps on giving. Her premium, premium handcrafted hair care products came about when she was unable to find anything on the market to suit her needs as a black woman. Well. She sat back, meditated, researched the market, and created this wonderful product for women's natural hair. But she didn't stop there. She went back to work and began working on a new line of fragrances oil that will be in a department store that's merely stealing your dollars out of your community. At Natalie J Naturals, not only does she have the latest fragrance and oils, but at Natalie J Naturals, they will meet you and create a fragrance that shoots, suits your style. Now that's God, I tell you. Where can you go and get a personal fragrance smell that is named after yourself? Well, I did, and I am a number one client today. Give her a call at area code 615-785-5609 today. You can also shoot her an email at natjack25 at gmail.com. That's N A T J A C K 25 at gmail.com. And also check her out, check out her latest products in which she has remarkable new products she's working on on her Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Natalie J Naturals. And get this, my beloveds, she delivers. <laughs> How awesome is that? That's Natalie J Naturals, delivering high quality hair and skincare products designed to meet your unique needs. And tell them, Minister Gio Harden sent you by. Thank you for watching and listening to the Holy Spirit's radio show. We're so honored that you chose this channel to be your source of information throughout the universe. We would love for you to follow us on our Holy Spirit Blog Talk Radio Network. And there, every time and each time we do a live broadcast, we will surely send you an email 
to let you know that when we are broadcasting live, you can be a part of our live audience. And also, if you'd like to hear something impertinent on the show, or something that you want to hear that you did not hear, also, you can go to our www.holyspiritradio.org page and go to the contact page. You click on the contact and write down a brief uh, information on what type of show you wish you would love to hear. And we wish you to get back with you on that issue soon. And if you're an entrepreneur or a writer of any sort, we would love to advertise your new book or your new business on our Holy Spirit Radio Show. Again, follow the link below this video and there you can go to the contact page and give us a contact. And we would love to showcase you and your business on our wonderful show. Again, we thank you guys for tuning in and for making us one of the fastest growing shows. And also, if you'd love to advertise on this show, we are seeking new advertisement. We have wonderful sponsors, but we're trying to grow. And that takes you, my beloveds. So again, go to the website, link below, and give us a, and give us a ring. And we will surely be so, so honored and so glad to hear from you. This is, this is Minister Geo Hart, thanking you, and wishing you peace and blessings. And we're back, and uh, we're, well, again we're talking about the new Jane Crow. Uh, this epidemic of resurrecting <laughs> women, young black women, resurrecting femininity in our black females—that is the the issue at hand. But I ran across a wonderful art article uh, written by a. Uh, Wonderful doctor, uh, Samori Swigert, or Swigert. Uh, she wrote this article for Culture Critic uh, just recently, earlier this year, uh, dealing with uh, young black women that are looking at growing up and instantly they're being subjected to negativity. And what's so sad about it is when, when, when these young women and men, or boys, young, young men and boys are having these, these babies, riding in them cars, listening to uh, Jay-Z, Future, all that old crazy stuff, Lil Wayne and the Sweet Boys, all that old foolishness, demonic music. The beats are even the money. People don't even, don't, don't even understand the essence of sound, the scientific method of sound and how, it's, how it works. All those low drones, those low beats, the money. You have, you have no idea of what music, how powerful music is, that is, how powerful music is. But yet this one of a sister wrote this article and uh, I'm gonna try to keep my composure because the problem I have, before I even get into any of this stuff, is how we are, how so many people of God have allowed themselves to be misled by everything you see. A lot of folks say, oh, I don't go to church, I don't go to church. You, you might need to do something. When you, when, when you look at the word faith, what is faith? It's believing in something that's unseen. And most people, they have no faith. They have, the only belief system they have is what the media says, what the TV says, what CNN tells them, what Obama tells them, and what white, white America tells them. And never trying God and the power that God has placed inside of you from within to look at society. And ask yourself, why are they giving me all this trash and filth? And then flip it, and we're honoring people like Kerry Washington, Gabrielle Union. We, we, I mean, we're praising them. 
for being the whores and house niggas on TV. I love both of those sisters. I, and and I, I know they got to eat. But why must they eat by being degraded as a woman? Both shows, you, you got two high-powered black women, degrees and probably masters, I'm pretty sure. But can't find not one damn black man. And I think Gabrielle's show is based in Atlanta. I'm not really sure. And Kerry, Kerry Washington's show is based in D.C. Both cities full of Negroes with degrees. And you can't find one? The devil is a liar. <laughs> the devil is a liar if you sit there and you buy into that. I'm going to move on from that. So this wonderful uh, doctor wrote this article in Culture Critic as I spoke in earlier. And she talked about, and she wrote this article back in January, and, and she's employing that all female females who read her article, and I posted her, I posted this article on this page as well, so you'll be able to read the article in its entirety. But she does tell people to be patient and, and receptive and not prejudge what she's trying to say until they finish reading her article. And she, she's talking about she wanted to see a renaissance of the current state of some of the female, black females. Female only indicates gender, she says. And she says, I want so she wants to see more ladies and women. And she's seen a generation of females that have lost touch with femininity. And, and she goes on to say that it's her, it, it's her opinion now that the entertainment industry has sabotaged young black females and she talked about them when she remembered when, when we young women uh, considered themselves of having grace and, and daintiness and femininity and which encouraged and hawking black female black males for shivery and catering to, to black young women and, and she talked about she about when young black girls and women walk with elegance conducted themselves impeccable, savoir faire, exuded finesse. And she said these characteristics were likely honey to young men. It crafted an image that men wanted to protect and was worthy of cherishing. Because that's what the black man is there for. To cherish and protect. Currently, femininity is on the decline and the lack of both mature parental involvement is responsible for the degradation of our young black girls now. Many parents are not, are not operating in a, in a cohesive manner to convey healthy and proper modeling for our youth. To complicate matters, entertainment industry has programmed the psyche of our youth. I just said that. Magazines, movies, all these things that you allow in your home, people. Magazines, movies, talk shows, reality shows, social media, YouTube, world star, certain books and videos, music, has reverse engineered the wisdom and lessons of the matriarchs of the black female and the black family. And true womanhood is becoming an archaic lost science. Much of what these forms of entertainment convey are externally focused and lack the substance that develop the interesting quality of today's female. And it's difficult to watch more than five minutes of reality shows like what? Hip Hop of Atlanta, Housewives of Atlanta, The Bad Girls Club, and see womanhood mutate to disrespectful barbarism, shallow e ego-driven narcissism, and the difference between being strong, independent, and being bossy, loud, and dismissive. And this is a similar woman saying they like a confident man and not a cocky, arrogant, obnoxious man. And what's so amazing is she writes in, in her article about how these women are rewarded for bad behavior. Society in the entertainment industry perpetuates the in, in, incompatibility between the black man and woman. This is accomplished by rewarding bad behavior. And why? 
Why are there TV shows that pay black women to be ratchet? Why do music videos objectively object black women as strippers? Why do record labels encourage and endorse black females artists to basically script in every video and pay them for raunchy dances and lyrics? Why must black females pose nude on the front cover of King, GQ, Esquire, Source Magazine to be considered successful and empowered? And you know they ain't, they ain't lying. <laughs> Janet Jackson, Beyonce, all of them, all of them, half naked, even Trina. She ain't got no money like that, but even Trina. And they viewed it as successful and empowering. To who? And what's the result? Black man and the black woman are being rendered socially and romantic, romantically incompatible now. Huh? And this is crippling black dating and the institution of marriage. The sanctity of marriage in the black community has been rendered dysfunctional and prone to divorce. We're carrying hazardous subliminal behaviors that were skillfully implanted like the movie Inception in our subconscious into our marriages and our households. Our daughters are assuming the machismo, bravado, and brute character of men, of men like Shakisha, the girl who got the uppercut on the bus, Jerry Springer on violent brawls and love and hip hop. This bad behavior fuels females incarceration because many are participating in acts considered criminal. Thus, we are also fostering a generation of the new Jane Crow. Let me tell you something. Black women, you are the mother of the earth. And I'm sorry you picked that food for your boyfriend and got that child. But just because you picked an idiot doesn't mean your life is over. Tupac had a song called Keep Your Head Up, dedicated to women going through all kind of situations dealing with relationships, being disrespected, huh? All those things he talked about in that song. In empowering women, letting them know who they are, where they came from. No longer will you hear a rapper sing like that. Speak like that, because that is the truth. Now y'all sitting there bobbing, bitches and hoes, bitches and hoes, and you, and you you just eating it up. Oh, they ain't talking to me. Yes, they are. Because that music lures your mind and your subconscious. So now when you get upset with, with, with another female, you bitch, you hoe, huh, they got you. Because you're dumbing down your spirit. And when an elder come along, God bless them, they try to speak life into you. Oh, I ain't got time for that. They old, they old. 38 years, somebody 38 years old, 47 years old trying to speak, speak life into you and you call them old because you're 20. You have forgotten your way. And all these black women that are trying to date white men, let me tell you something. Where's the love? I see black couples, interracial couples every day. And out of a full year when I see them, maybe five out of 15,000 are even happy. Are even happy. Folks are married for every damn reason but unity. Cohesiveness. Spirituality. Doesn't even count no more. You see somebody got some money to take care of you, boom. I love you. And off you go. Never giving God any glory, any honor by using the power from within you that God has placed inside of you. No. You rather say, uh-uh, I'm going to go to the white man. He take good care of me. That's back in slavery. <laughs> That's what your slave master did. That's why people say, oh, you know, times are different. No, it's not. What a fool you are. 
They've just disguised it. Because here you are now, back, back in slavery. I'm, I'm going to give you a quick some scenario. I'm, I'm going to keep on with, with this thing. But I got to tell you this. Back in slavery time, what did they do? They separated your kids, your husband, your family. And, 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 and what did they do to, to the black man? Besides raping too. See, people forget that the masters, they were, they were having sex with the men too. So here you are having sex with your, somebody having sex with your husband in front of you. Ain't no sex with your husband. And then beat your husband. Break him. So now you know you can't depend on him. You got to depend on who? Massa. And fast forward to 2 2014, what are you doing? You're marrying Massa. Because you have no faith in a black man because they tore that from you. You fool you. What a fool you are. You have no consciousness, no spirituality of who you are and what God made you to be. So you bow down to the system, the system, the system. And again, they win. They win. A real woman knows how to smoothly mitigate conflicts and disagreements without showing her ass. This is what this, this sister writes in an article. As a man, it is hard to even treat a female with chivalry, kindness, and respect when they don't carry themselves in a manner worthy of chivalry. And you can't act like a man and be angry that they don't treat you like a woman. And when a woman is super independent to the extreme, we don't feel the need to treat, cater, woo, or bend over backwards because we assume you can do everything for yourselves. Leave some room and work for us to do. Allow us the opportunity to demonstrate our utility. Historically speaking, the only thing we're, we've ever really had in America as blacks was that trustful bond between husband, wife, and children. That's why I gave you that, that quick synopsis of what we what you had that was power back in the 20s and 40s they had black wall street down in oklahoma they even had had uh, i think in south carolina it was in charleston charleston i think it was somewhere over there black families just running things every time you see a black a black man and a black woman together that's power but what's so sad about it america it's fear into the wealthy. Because what happens is, with that unity and that power, no longer do they, do they need assistance from the government. They don't even need a damn government. 60 seconds. And how do the government operate? By using the poor. <laughs> it's not that a government, it's that a pimp. That's why all these, and even in Atlanta, all these cities that had thriving African, what Rosewood, all these, these towns and cities around the U.S. that had thriving African-American businesses were burnt to the ground. Here you are paying their taxes and doing their own thing were burnt to the ground. And here you are as a black woman telling me, I'm on, I, I'll just marry anybody. I, I, you know, I don't care. What a fool you are. Don't you know, when you, if, if, you, if you look at when they passed that law, I think in 1967, for people to marry outside the outside their race. If you look at every race of people and add them all up together, meaning meaning whites and Asians and um, different ethnicities and, and, and Middle Eastern and whites and, and Asian and all kinds of mixtures, black marry white folks more than any other race of people. Combined. You've been trained that way. Don't get it twisted. Don't psych yourself and say, well, no, love is love. Don't psych, yeah, love is love. But how do you build a nation of people, of godly people? Don't leave it that way. This wonderful article that this sister wrote was so powerful, man. And uh, again, it's in the culture critic Back in January, Dr. Samori Swagger. Wonderful article that um, I wanted to really bring to you tonight. 
And um, I'm gonna take a quick break one more time. I'm gonna end, I'm gonna end with this wonderful uh, article, uh, this lecture that Dr. Umar Johnson uh, did recently uh, dealing with why so many black kids are turning gay. And again, this is only part one. We're doing black boys turning gay on tomorrow's episode. So again, I urge you to tell somebody to tune in. Uh, it's gonna be wonderful, gonna be exciting. And uh, we'll be back uh, after this brief message. We'll, we'll be back uh, to close out this show in just a moment. All right, we were having some technical difficulties on the commercial, so we, we're going to get right um, into this but anybody in here with Dr. Umar Johnson. Being miseducated or psychiatrically medicated because you got somebody you can call on. I say, I say the energy is in here. <laughs> now, let's talk about the facts. 64% of black children don't live with their fathers. There's one out of every two don't live with their fathers. Now, they might have at some point. They might later. But at some point in their life, they will not live with their fathers. That's a significant issue. But as a therapist, you have to withhold judgment until you know the reasons why. Because guess what? Some non-custodial parents are impossible to live with. Some sisters can't tolerate that father. Some fathers can't tolerate that sister. And if you put two people in a house who absolutely don't want to be there, domestic violence is likely to follow. And so now you got your children in a home but it ain't a happy one and your daughter is watching this back and forth friction and your son is watching this back and forth friction which does what so the seed in their mind that it's okay to be disagreeable with your mate or maybe you arguing with their father you arguing with their mother may have pissed them off so much that they decide to never get married at all or maybe daddy mistreated mommy so much that i'm not even going to spend my life with a man i'd rather spend it with a woman Oh yes, I specialize in homosexual therapy for our teenage people, okay? Yeah, you'd be surprised the stories I get for why they became that way. I can always tell you what it was. If it's a girl, she's a lesbian, guess what? She was either sexually abused, physically abused, verbally abused. She was stripped of her father. She was raised to believe that black men were nothing, okay? She was bullied by boys and told she was ugly her whole life. I always know what it is. Same thing with the boys. Father wasn't there. The mother psychologically castrated them. What do I mean by that, mothers? Because you know y'all tongue can cut. <laughs> Watch what you say to your son. Y'all be on the street. Oh, you ain't going to be no good. You're going to be just like your father. I wish I never had you. You don't ever say that to a child. Because if you keep on telling him he's nothing, sooner or later he might just decide to make you a believer. That's right. It's when they give up on trying to prove to you that they can be somebody because you never believed they could. But psychologically speaking, what do we know? Many of us beat up on our children because we don't think much of ourselves. Did y'all hear that? There's a direct relationship between child abuse and low self-esteem of the parent. That is a replica of you. And because you don't like you, how the hell are you going to like your offspring? Ah, shit! When divorce occurs, black children are usually awarded to the mother, even the boys. Now... I can understand the girls, but we need to spend time with them. But ladies, with the war out here on black men, if a father wants to be the primary custodial parent of a son, if he's beyond the age of five, because I can understand up until kindergarten, why in the hell y'all fighting to raise a 13-year-old in your house when you know you can do nothing with that boy? And then, when he gets 17 and start talking back, and he get to be 6'3 and 250, you want to call us up? to 
come in and play the damn cops to a boy who don't even respect us because he never knew us. Think about what you're doing. Fathers, same thing. You didn't want your daughters to be in the lives of the mother, so guess what? When the daughters start getting nasty, you don't know what to do with it, so you say, come get your daughter. Well, she don't see her as mom because you disrupted that bond. We gotta look at what we're doing. Children are more likely to be abused by a stepfather if their biological father is absent from their lives. Now this is a statistic that I like to tell fathers who like to check out. They say, Brother Umar, I can't take it. I just got to leave this alone. Be careful. Because all brothers ain't brothers. And if they know that you ain't creeping around checking on your biological, some of us are selfish, we'll mistreat them. Mothers, it's the same thing. You say the father got custody of your daughter, you don't want to be bothered with it. Be careful because his wife might be everything to him, but nothing to your child. And one of the things we have to stop doing is marrying and cohabitating with people who we know don't give a damn about our children. Did y'all hear me? Because a lot of us think that the children can't tell. Soon when that man walk in the house, soon when that woman walk in the house, a child know they ain't here for us. They only here for mama. And some of y'all let that happen. Fellas, you too. You let that woman come, ignore your children, and then act like everything's supposed to be all right. And then when the children move out your house for college, they never come back even for holiday visits. Because they hate your ass. Because you chose a woman over your daughter. And children don't forget easily. African-American children are more likely to have an incarcerated father. And their mothers are less likely to take them to visit their fathers. Now listen to me, mamas. And dads, but because there's more black men in jail, but the sisters are catching up. Listen to me. Some of y'all got this belief that if my son goes sees his father in jail, that's going to make him a criminal. It's going to desensitize him to jail. Guess what? The evidence is actually the opposite. A child of an incarcerated father is seven to nine times more likely himself to end up in jail. So if you take him to see his father, his father will teach him how this ain't the place to be. And I don't ever want to see you here. Some of you all are sowing the seeds of juvenile delinquency because you got a son who ain't connected with the dad, who thinking jail life is all that because you don't allow his father to teach him that it ain't. And sooner or later, he ends up in the exact same place you never wanted him to be just because you didn't think it was necessary to take him up to the jail. I'm working on a project right now, Gratiford Prison, Pennsylvania, one of the largest maximum security prisons in America. Myself, state representative, and some other folk. We, we, we have a fact program, okay? It's a fatherhood program where we take the children up to the jail to visit the fathers if the mothers don't want to be bothered. That's what we're doing. Because fathers still need to be fathers even in jail. Do y'all follow me? So I got to call parents and convince them that your son needs to see his father, that your daughter needs to see her father. And some of us are so trifling that we think our children are going to develop just like we do. I hear things like, well, I grew up without my dad and I turned out all right. Uh -oh. No, the hell you didn't, because if you did, you wouldn't be stopping your child from going to see this. It's amazing how we love to point out everybody else's faults but can never see our own. You know why? Because that big damn ego living inside of you that only wants to see your good that you do and never see the wrong. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't check your ego before you settle down or get married, your partner will check your ass and then move out because ain't nobody going to live with a selfish ass ego. Get your house in order before you go ruin somebody else's. See, you got to recognize that we got spiritual vampires in the black community. What is a spiritual vampire? What is a vampire? It's a beast! but you can't tell in the daytime. <laughs> but Brother Jabari say, some of y'all gonna go clubbing tonight, right? There's gonna be some vampires in there. He gonna be dressed up, ladies. He gonna be sharp, cologne and everything. And, let, and fellas, she gonna be sharp. She gonna have the cuts, the build, the abs and everything. You're like, damn, right? They look like people, don't they? You think they human? Until you let them spend one night on the hours. And then all of a sudden they transform and the teeth start growing and the ears get pointy. And you know what they do? They intoxicate your world with all their emotional baggage. You're like, damn, when I met them, they were so nice. We only two weeks into this damn thing and I'm ready to give up. Because you dating a spiritual vampire. Spiritual vampires love happy people because they think that if they suck enough of your energy, it'll make them happy.
because they fail to realize that the only people who control the way we feel is ourselves. But some of us get in relationships because we think we can make somebody else responsible for doing something we couldn't do for ourselves. <laughs> Statistics are not kept on black fathers who want to be involved in their children's lives, but gets disrupted by the mother or the grandmother or the whole damn family. I had to go with one father. We went over there to talk to the mother to have a sit down. Everybody was there. Cousins, grandpa with a kid. I said, damn. Y'all want to fight the man just because he want to see his sin? So I had to defuse the situation. I called some of my homies, though, straight up. I said, look, I don't know if I can work my way out of this one. This is the address. Be outside. If I text you, come. Come in. Whether the door locked or not. You think my psychology always going to work? Oh, no. Some brothers are straight third. I don't want to hear that. You got three master's degree? You ain't my master. Damn! <laughs> but doc, doc, who? I ain't never seen you in a <laughs> In America, mothers are more likely to prevent interaction between father and child for personal reasons rather than factors relevant to child development. This ain't just black women either. Ladies, the child came through you, but it don't belong to you. Not from an African frame of reference. Study your culture. If you want to go back to Egypt, at least study how the families were viewed, okay? The child comes through you, but it belongs to the community. You have to get rid of this consciousness that says, that's my child. I carried her. I carried him. They look just like me, not you. It don't matter if you spit them out. That's still their daddy. It takes two to make that child, not one. And guess what? If you try to do it by yourself, you're going to make a mistake because God did not design humanity to be raised in a house of one parent. See, you need 50% feminine energy and you need 50% masculine energy. That's the balance. All of us are half male, half female, but one dominates or should. Okay? Stop laughing! So, if your daughter don't get validated by her father, she'll spend the rest of her life looking for validation. Now, you teach her how to be a lady, but he must validate her womanhood. Don't you ever forget that. If your son is always up under your skirt and never get that masculine structure, he might start wanting to wear one. All right, and that's an insert of, um, from Brother Dr. Umar Johnson uh, dealing with why, explaining why so many black kids are turning gay and dealing with the, the breakdown of the family structure and um, among many other reasons. But again, this is only part one uh, of the segment and we're going to be doing part two uh, on tomorrow or uh, dealing with the black boys uh, while they are uh, turning uh, more gay. Uh, and again, this is about division people. Not about, it's not about that's who I am, I was born, you know, whatever. And if, if that's the case, why are so many women calling themselves lesbian but got three, four, five, six kids? Again, the devil is a liar. We'll be discussing this tomorrow a bit more in depth. And I thank you all for tuning in for this segment. And again, share this uh, message with your loved ones, your friends, and your family. And as we always say in parting...